All right, Christy, show me the money, and let's talk about some of these guys that are getting some big-time deals. Let's talk first. Start with the Jets, and let's talk about San Antonio Holmes. They re-signed him, giving him a good chunk of dough, five-year deal. What do you make of San Antonio? He's a great player. I see why they made him sort of their top priority. But I also think it's a big risk. Hopefully it's a risk that they've calculated and they've included language in his contract because this guy seems to have, you know, a hard time staying out of trouble. And you know, he had this tweet picture that he sent out where he was drinking this expensive champagne and, you know, it wasn't <laughs> him toasting a friend. It was him half naked chugging from the bottle like a frat boy. <laughs> and you know, I, I think he's a big risk. I mean, in, in all honesty, the, every picture he tweets out of himself, he's always half naked and he always has a bottle of alcohol. So I don't know why this would be any different. I, I think it's interesting. People were actually this morning, obviously we're, we're based here in Boston, and people were making the comparison. Actually, uh, Phil DiMartino was making the comparison to some of our, you know, the comparison to the New England Patriots against the Jets. And when you look at the Jets, people will say, oh, they're thugs. That's their team right now. But yet the Patriots will say, well, Bill Belichick, he's going to go out and get, you know, a guy like Albert Hainsworth, and he's going to try to convert him. Well, I think the record shows exactly that. I don't think there's that far apart from that being the truth right there, is it? It's not. And, you know, I think that both Belichick and Rex Ryan think that they can sort of take these guys under their wings and get them on the straight and narrow. They're great football players. Um, I think Rex Ryan is somebody who is good with players like that, and maybe that's why the Jets were willing to take this risk. And like I said, I don't mind it as long as it was a calculated risk and that they got language in that contract because he gets in trouble one more time, he's out an entire season. That's a huge loss on a player you've put this kind of money with and that you're counting on in this capacity. All right. You know, Christy, he's just one of many guys that are, A, going to get into a lot of trouble and, B, going to, well, get into all sorts of ridiculous bottles of wine and take more pictures of himself, which I am not a fan of seeing whatsoever. So what I would like to go ahead now, let's move on. Let's go ahead and play our ad of the week. One year. The world comes together. In London. On July 27, 2012, London ignites the torch. That could be a routine that was the greatest performance we have ever seen. The Americans have won the gold medal. It's going to be a photo finish. We'll share their struggles, celebrate their triumphs. You say both spreading of history for Michael Thau. Man, Wolf, gold medal champion. The legacy lives here, now and for the next decade. What about the world leaders? Next summer in London on the networks of NBC Universal. All right, Christy, I'm curious to get your opinions and your thoughts because the Summer Olympics are something that I absolutely love. I've always loved the Summer Olympics. I hate the Winter Olympics, <laughs> but I've absolutely loved the Summer Olympics. But this ad coming out exactly to the minute one year ahead of next year's Summer Olympics. What do you make of their product placement, if you will? It was interesting. They called it a roadblock because it aired on every NBC affiliated channel at the exact same time. I think they're trying to create some buzz for this. I'm with you. I enjoy the Summer Olympics more, and I, you know, I haven't ever really paid attention to the ratings, but I would imagine it's probably better ratings than the Winter Olympics. And I look forward to it, but I hadn't even thought about how close we were to it at this point. But NBC's got to create some buzz because they went in with an extraordinarily high offer for the Olympics, so high they knew they wouldn't be beat. And I've talked about this on the show before. I think this is all part of NBC really posi positioning itself in sports. Um, now that they've combined with Comcast, I think they're going to be going after more and more sports properties. This was a big one for them to get, but every analyst I've seen look at it has said they're either going to lose money or if they're lucky, they're going to break even. So they've got to create the buzz when they can. And if that means starting a year early, then that's what you have to do.